What's going on? Jake here with Uncommon ADC, and today I'm checking out the Dickinson Trading Post Clam 2. This one is in the limited run colorway High Viz Neon, which is currently sold out in the Clam 2, but at least at the time of publishing, the Clam 1 is still available in this colorway if you're interested in it. The only difference between the Clam 1 and Clam 2 is that they are mirrored. So on the Clam 2, this version, the zipper pocket is in the front and it has a two inch by six inch loop of velcro and on the clam one the front side is actually going to be what is the back side of this pouch which has this five inch slip pocket and a two inch by four and a half inch loop of velcro so pretty much exactly the same the interior pockets are exactly mirrored as well so they're going to be backwards from what you see here but otherwise the same exact pouch so it really comes down to preference and again this colorway is limited run and probably going to be sold out pretty soon but if you're interested in the pouch there's plenty of other colorways that come out pretty frequently as well as their kind of standard colorways that you can probably get on their etsy store most of the time and so this pouch runs about $60, which isn't too, too bad. It's a larger size pouch, much larger than I've been featuring recently, although I've been kind of moving into these larger pouches. I'll kind of move back and forth and eventually get back into those pocketable sizes. But this is a larger size at four and a half inches wide by six inches tall. And so pretty large pouch and you can see it's pretty thick when it's fully loaded out this is probably upwards of three inches right now and can get even thicker i don't have this stuffed completely so there's definitely room for a little bit more and it's made in the u.s ships for free if you're in the u.s and all handmade so these are individually made by hand in the u.s so 60 dollars doesn't seem too too crazy for these but a little bit pricier than what you'd pay for some like the commercially available Maxpedition, VanQuest, um, Viper Aid, that sort of thing. So just kind of depends on what your cost tolerance is there. But I'm gonna show everything that I have in here as well as talk about the dimensions. Obviously I have a lot of patch real estate. So this two inch by six inch strip, I only have a few patches on there. I went with the orange and green Haterade, which you've probably seen before if you've watched the channel. I've featured a lot of the different colors of these, as well as the notorious EDC glow in the dark, dark beer bomb on the front. And on the back, I have the tough possum gear, the Gondak EDC. It's dangerous to go alone, take this, kind of like the orange and green in the handle there, and the cease and desist. So kind of one, two color match for the most part. I didn't do the entire pouch color match because I really wanted to put gear that I would actually carry in here rather than go with color match gear exactly. So for the most part, I followed the theme, but there's a few exceptions. And so right up front in the zipper pouch, and this extends the entire six inches and all of the interior is usable. So four and a half by six inches. I only have a Hank in here. This one is another kind of high vis item. This one from Awesome Hank Gear. One of my favorite Hank companies. These are five by five-ish Hanks, a little bit smaller than most of the Hanks that I feature on the channel. And it has this little O-ring down here, whatever you want to call it, that will have a lanyard so you can pull it out and sometimes have beads that kind of match the Hank. And so a really cool one, a little bit smaller. It fits really nicely in this pouch just kind of folded in half but you can fit obviously larger hanks in there you just have to do a little bit more folding and again this is one of my favorite hang companies they just make some really cool hanks and i always like the kind of accessories that go with it so definitely check them out if you're interested typically i think most of their hanks run around 25 bucks so they're going to be a little bit more than the gondek edc hanks but also have a little bit of actual hardware that goes with them whereas the gondek edc is going to be a little bit bigger Another one of my favorite companies, I'm not putting down Gone Duck EDC for sure, they're, they're about 7x7, seven seven, sometimes 7.5x7.5. Seven seven uh, really simple, but always has really cool designs on the Gone Duck EDC, and they're super cheap. Those ones are only 10 bucks, so really can't beat that. I don't know of any hang companies that are really making cheaper hanks than Gone Duck EDC, and really, really high quality. I probably have about 50 of them, so definitely not putting those down, but check out Awesome Hank here as well. And that's all I have in the front pocket. Obviously, I'm not making great use of that. And a lot of times I don't. I just don't have a lot of really flat items. You can put credit cards and cash and that sort of thing in there as well. But again, this isn't really a pocket pouch, so it's not a great place for that kind of stuff. But definitely something you could utilize for that. On the back side, it's more of a slip pocket. So just keep in mind, one of the items I have in here is pretty 
loose. And so this for sure could fall out. Haven't had too much issue with it so far, but it definitely could fall out. I've only really carried this for a day or two in a bag and it was kind of sitting upright on the bottom of the bag and the bag was packed tightly so it really couldn't flip over and it's not like I was flipping over the bag. So I haven't had issues with that, but for sure I could imagine in a looser fitting bag that this could kind of flip over inside the bag and this would just fall out. But is the TPT slide in the Topo design with the Topo utility blade and just kind of fit with the theme of the bag. I really went with kind of a toolkit in this bag, which a lot of times that's what I'm using, bigger ones for either a toolkit or a tech kit. And so this one's a toolkit, wanted to include a utility knife in there. And so this is the one I went with. I probably could have put it inside so I don't have to worry about it falling out, but again, the bag that I was putting it in was very, very tight and so pretty full. It wasn't like an oversized bag and so didn't have worry too much about that flipping over. Next up is a flashlight. This one is the 511. It says EDC on it. I don't know if that's a model number. This is a two AAA battery flashlight. Kind of a simple one, pen style light. A little bit bulky but not too, too bad. And I don't remember how much I paid for this, but it was pretty cheap. It might have been even a free promo at the time, I don't remember. But again, not a super expensive flashlight, so a really nice option. And it takes AAA batteries, which sometimes I like. You know, rechargeable ones are great until you don't have the charger with you and the battery is dead. The AAA is nice because they're available at any gas station or store, grocery store, anywhere you really can find batteries. They're gonna have AAA batteries. And so that's sometimes a nice option. And so YKK zippers all the way around. And I don't know if I mentioned that slip pocket's five inches tall. Obviously you can put items that are taller, but it's five inches tall. So almost the entire length of the pouch itself. And it opens clamshell style, but there's only one zipper, which is something to keep in mind. So. I do like when they include two zippers just because this one you have to close it with the zipper on top but if it had two zippers you can put them in the middle or on the other side if you have a preference and so this one doesn't really give you the option it's not the biggest deal in the world but you it is always going to close this exactly the same because there's only one zipper and then next to that zipper is this little loop where you can add I would use it for like a hero clip probably but you can add other things to it as well. You can put some sort of strap on here if you wanted to. But again, for me, this is a really nice place for a hero clip if you want to be able to hang this pouch on a tree branch or over a towel rack or anything like that. And so I'm gonna dive in here. I'll go kind of left to right. And just keep in mind again, if you're getting the clam one, it's gonna be the exact opposite of this. So this is the clam two orientation and if you want this colorway it's only available still in the clam one so it's going to be the opposite orientation and so up front you have a four inch tall pocket there's a five inch tall pocket right behind that the four inch tall pocket is divided about an inch and a half in the first section and about three inches or so it's a little bit closer to two and a half but about three inches on the second pocket. Again, there's just a little bit of a seam here that's keeping it from utilizing the entire four and a half inches. And then you can see the middle section by itself is about two inches wide, but again, with this current loadout, it ends up being about three inches thick when it's fully loaded up. And so on the left, I just went with a lighter, kind of fit the color scheme in this case. This is just a standard large size Bic. And one to include a lighter, this one fit well in there, so I went with that rather than like a Zippo or something, something similar. But one thing to keep in mind is it can kind of disappear in that pocket. You can always just push it up, it's not too bad. But I usually leave it sitting like this and it hasn't really had a problem with it falling down further. It's pretty snug in there. But you can lose the item in the bottom of the pocket, but it pushes out pretty easily. The entire thing, for the most part, is made about out of a 1000D Cordura. And so pretty stiff and not super flexible material. So something to keep in mind is not gonna flex that much if you wanna put something that's oversized, but it's also gonna be really, really sturdy construction. The only exception, and again, all this section, this, all the exterior is 1000D Cordura. The exception is this back, which is like a 200D ripstop nylon. And so just that back lining of the interior pockets is that ripstop nylon, everything else is Cordura. And one other thing to keep in mind is the interior stitching is all black, whereas the exterior uses this kind of high-vis yellow, so a little bit different in terms of what the stitching looks like. I guess that's not really something to keep in mind, but if you, if you care about the stitching, they are, there are different colors there. 
Next up in the wider portion of the pocket, which may have been a better pocket for this item on the other side just because it's so wide, but I did want to show that that fits in the smaller pockets, is the Demco AD 20.5, just kind of a super fun fidgety knife. Again, went with an orange knife, didn't really need to, but might as well. And that fits extremely well in there with plenty of room to spare. So wanted to include a knife in there. And then in the back was the Weha bit selector. You'll notice that I don't have a bit driver in here, but the good, nice thing about the bit selector is that it will double as a bit driver. So you have this extender here as well as all of the bits and the extender fits right here in the end and can function as a bit driver. It's a little bit chunky and awkward, but it works. The only thing is it's not gonna be great in small places, but it works and is a really nice option here that carries the bits in it as well. So included that, this one is all Torx bits, but they have a couple different versions of this with different kinds of bits inside if you're interested in checking those out. I'll put links to as many of the items as I can in the descriptions below. I'll include the link to the Clam 1 instead of the Clam 2 since that one's still available at the moment. But again, just check their store. They have all kinds of different colorways that come out over time. So onto the right side, so you'll, you notice this side is a little bit kind of off center. It's not a perfect division. This one's pretty close to a perfect division. And in fact, the description says it's about a perfect division. It's not exactly. One of them's about two inches and one's about two and a quarter inches. So they're almost divided in half, but it's not exactly. And that's something that you get with these kind of handmade pouches. It's not gonna be, all of them are gonna be unique. You know, they're not gonna be exactly the same because they're not just being made in a machine and assembly line. They're handmade, hand stitched. And so you'll get a little bit of variation, but it, they're gonna be pretty similar. So on the left side, I have these Knipex, Knipex pliers. These are, I believe the four inch ones, maybe five inch. And I like to include these anytime I have a multi-tool or at least an adjustable wrench, something like that to carry the, to hold the backside like a nut. If you're trying to twist a bolt out, you usually are gonna need something to clamp on to both sides. And so even though you have a multi-tool, you're probably not gonna be able to remove the bolt still if you don't have something to hold the nut on the backside. So I like to include something like this anytime I'm including a multi-tool in one of my loadouts. And so next up, I went with this multi-tool. This is the Victorinox Swiss tool. And the reason I went with it is just a really, really bulky multi-tool. It's one of the, if not the largest multi-tool that I own. It's just really wide and heavy. And I put it in this pocket because this is a smaller pocket. You can see that it fit in there pretty snugly but with plenty of room to spare. And you can put it on the other side as well in that larger pocket with even more room to spare, but I figured why not keep it in there a little bit more snugly since it fits in the other one. But a nice thing that you can fit a really full size, it, I mean, it doesn't really get more full size than this in terms of multi-tools, really full size multi-tool into this pouch very easily, which is always nice. And then next up, I, it has this little key keeper in here and I decided to put a pocket pen in here. This is a weird addition of the pocket pen. It's pretty much a standard on the inside. This looks like the normal pocket pen, but on the exterior it has this aluminum casing. So just kind of a little bit of a nicer version of it. And it's on a keychain, so it fits well on this key keeper. And so you can obviously use it within here. I believe you can just pull it out like this if you want to right outside of it, but you can just leave it in here right with it and put it back as well. And so, most of you know I always like to carry pen and paper. This time I went with the field notes, which is pretty out of my normal. A lot of the time I'm using a log and jotter. These, I have a bunch of these. They're weird field notes. It was a special like quarterly edition where you can, I don't have a slip in there right now, but you, there's a section here where it says insert image here. And you can just, it comes with these inserts that you can glue pictures to or tape them down and slide it in here and they'll show with, through this hole. I just put one of my stickers on there just because I didn't want to slide an image in there. This one's obviously not used, but I have probably six or maybe nine of them. I don't remember. They come in sets of three and I bought a few of them. So kind of a cool option. Obviously this one is a grid paper, but these are three and a half by five and a half, I believe. And so that fits in there very nicely. Again, not gonna bend up your corners or anything like that if that's something you're worried about. And so really nice to be able to carry a decent sized little notebook inside the pouch. And so that's everything I'm carrying inside. I did also want to mention there's these two loops 
on the top of each side, well one on the top of each side making two total loops that you can attach keychains and that sort of thing too as well. I'm not really utilizing those, but if you have something you want to attach up there you definitely can. I definitely might utilize this one add a hero clip to it. I didn't have an extra one right now. I think all of the smaller hero clips that I have are on other pouches right now and didn't want to put like a giant one meant for a backpack on there, but I do like to put hero clips on these type of things so that if there's like a towel bar or a branch or something nearby, you can use that hero clip to hang the pouch. And so I do like to include those. Don't have an extra one right now, but we'll probably get one added to there at some point. But super cool pouch from the Concentrating Post. This is my first pouch from them, surprisingly. I've been following them for a really long time. I don't know how I haven't bought one yet, but definitely gonna pick up more. It's really, really well made and just a really cool pouch. And so the Hive is may or may not be for you. I like it a lot. My wife saw it and she liked it, but she's like, it's hard to look at. It gives me a headache. It's just too bright. And so definitely not for everyone. I like, I'm really into it lately. I don't know why. And I think for me, it's nice that you can see it on the bottom of your bag. It's just going to stand out. And the first thing that you see when you open your bag, which is always nice, especially if you're going around in the dark looking for something. And so for me, I like it, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification button. And as always, I hope you have a great one. Take care.